This fiery woman had just returned from swimming when she witnessed an extremely bizarre scene. Her husband had actually taken off his pants and then used a small belt to tie a knot. He slowly looked up towards the top of the tree and then, with the belt looped around his foot, climbed up like a wild man. Marina thought her husband was going to pick coconuts for her to eat, and she was overjoyed. She quickly got dressed and went over, but when Marina arrived at the coconut grove and saw countless coconuts on the ground, she grew curious about why her husband was still climbing the tree. She quietly approached the base of the tree where Sergei was. Unexpectedly, this scumbag was secretly flirting with another woman. Marina didn't expose him right away but instead tried hard to suppress her anger. After waiting for five minutes, Seriously? hearing such intimate terms of endearment, Sergei was so frightened that he didn't dare to turn his head. Marina disdainfully glanced at him. Later that night, as they lay harmoniously on the beach, Marina stroked Sergei's forehead and didn't mention anything about the daytime events. But after Sergei fell asleep, Marina secretly took his phone. Looking at the speedboat in front of her, she made a terrifying decision. The next day, Marina leisurely strolled on the beach. Значит, катер унесло в океан, а телефон ты потерял. Ну не переживай. Ты же сам не вчера говорил. Сюда каждый день ходят экскурсии. Кто-нибудь приедет, нас заберет. Или у тебя были какие-то срочные дела? Да не было никаких дел. Sergei sat on the beach in utter despair, not only worried about his secretary but also a pile of company matters waiting to be handled. Marina wanted just this effect. She wanted to enjoy a world of just the two of them. Then, using the excuse of looking for food, Marina secretly went to the other side of the island, where she had hidden the speedboat. Little did she know that Sergei was quietly following her. Marina took the key off her neck and hid the phone in a secret compartment. Sergei saw it all. But he didn't say anything because his wife was a national archery champion. The only way to get out of here was to outsmart her. The next day, Sergei woke up first. He stood up and said he was going to make breakfast. Marina thought this man had really changed. But when she touched her chest, she realized the key was gone. Just as Marina stood up, she was tripped by a rope and fell to the ground. Sergei had used a vine to tie one of her feet. Looking at his surprised wife, he turned and boarded the speedboat. Although Marina freed herself, Sergei had no intention of taking her with him. Marina tried to win him back, but Sergei mercilessly drove the boat away. However, Marina coldly picked up a small knife and a box of matches. Now it was completely over. Sergei didn't expect his wife to be so ruthless. Without the boat, he had no choice but to return to the island. At this moment, Marina was studying a deadly weapon. Using a small knife, Marina stripped off the leaves, leaving behind the thick trunk, and then wrapped wet cloth strips around the junction of two branches. She had just crafted the limbs of a recurved bow. The rope was wetted to make it more flexible and then attached to the ends of the blade. And a stone was wrapped around the reed to make the arrowheads. Sergei wasn't so lucky. At this moment, he too had ventured into the jungle, but he accidentally entered a cave. At the other end of the cave, a horrifying scene unfolded, a group of savages were living there, and Sergei's location was the entrance to Skull Island. As Sergei tried to leave the place, he saw that the cave was adorned with severed human heads. Looking at the identification codes on their wrists, they seemed to be tourists who had come here for a vacation. In panic, Sergei ran into the jungle and coincidentally bumped into his wife, who was heading in his direction. Just as he was about to speak about the cannibals, Marina shot an arrow at him, seeing that the first arrow missed. She quickly took out a second one, terrified. Sergei hid behind a tree. Marina kept asking who that woman was. Seeing his wife about to explode in anger, Sergei picked up a coconut and attempted a diversionary tactic. Faced with the arrowhead so close at hand, Sergei realized that this was not the time for reasoning. He dropped the stick and fled the scene. But Marina, like a wild person, was proficient in various survival skills. At this time, Sergei hid in the bushes, reflecting on himself. He hadn't flirted with any other woman at all. 
The pressure from his company's affairs was overwhelming him. The phone call Marina overheard was actually him complaining to another man about wanting to leave this place and return to the company as soon as possible. But now, he could only confide in a monkey. Starving, Sergei grabbed wild fruits from the ground and stuffed them into his mouth which caused him to hallucinate. He saw his colleagues from the company. Even at this moment, he was still thinking about how to modify the plan. Following his own hallucination, Sergei actually pulled out the sunken ship. Just as he was thanking the brother in front of him, an arrow suddenly shot through, causing the man to disappear. Sergei, holding a wooden plank, hid behind the ship. Marina set the ship on fire, and Sergei took this opportunity to escape from there. When he came back to the jungle, he happened to encounter two savages hunting. Taking advantage of their distraction, Sergei actually stole a wooden raft. But this scene was discovered by a savage at a turn. Sergei desperately rowed the small boat. Knowing he couldn't escape far, he dragged the raft back to land. But the savages had already set their sights on Sergei's movements. As Sergei cautiously moved forward, he happened upon his wife, who was busy setting up traps. Marina was so engrossed in studying the hunting traps that she didn't notice Sergei sneaking up behind her with a stick. Just as Sergei was about to strike, Marina turned around abruptly. However, due to the angle, she failed to see Sergei's figure, and she bent down again to continue working on the trap. Sergei then raised the stick and ambushed Marina from behind, but immediately regretted it after striking her. Just as he was about to check Marina's wound, he accidentally triggered a trap under his feet and was hoisted into the air. Marina also woke up at this moment and, seeing the man above her, was furious. She realized that it was her own husband who had just attacked her. Marina picked up the stick, and just as she was about to retaliate, Footsteps suddenly sounded from behind. A group of cannibals came chasing after them. Marina, with a wicked smile, dropped the stick and fled. Meanwhile, Sergei, hearing the noise, started desperately swinging his body. When the cannibals arrived, he hid among the tree vines. But Marina wasn't so lucky. The cannibals chased after her relentlessly, and she hid behind a large tree, not daring to make a sound. Suddenly, a hand grabbed Marina. It was Sergei, saving her life. Although they were temporarily safe, Marina's fury hadn't subsided, and she attacked Sergei. Sergei turned and ran, hiding behind a wooden post, trying to explain, but Marina was convinced that this scoundrel had betrayed her. Sergei's response also exposed his location. Marina slowly approached and speared through the wooden post. Just as she was pulling out the spear, a coffin lid suddenly opened and a corpse fell onto Marina, Sergei, enjoying her misfortune from the side. But the next second, Marina got up and started to fight back. Although she was formidable, Sergei was still a man after all. He grabbed his wife by her legs and threw her out. Marina, no ordinary woman, got up and smashed a giant clay pot onto Sergei's head. Sergei was completely knocked out. After shouting a few times, Marina also panicked. After all, despite their quarrel, she didn't really want to take her husband's life. Marina began performing CPR on Sergei, and finally, after a vigorous attempt, Sergei woke up. After this ordeal, they temporarily ceased fighting, but Sergei then proposed divorce. It was then that Marina realized she might have gone too far. Just at that moment, they suddenly fell to the ground one after another. The cannibals had found them. They were tied to an altar and forcibly fed an unknown liquid. Marina was to be sacrificed to the fire god and Sergei to the sea god. As he neared the waterfall, Sergei suddenly woke up and, at the critical moment, grabbed a vine on the shore. The boat fell down the waterfall towards the sea, but Sergei narrowly escaped disaster. At this moment, Marina's time for being sacrificed to the fire god was drawing closer. Unexpectedly, Sergei blended into the cannibal tribe and seized a spear, taking control of the tribal chief. Then, Sergei turned and ran towards his wife. In the shocked gaze of the crowd, Sergei hugged the stake and, using all his strength, uprooted it. This act stunned the entire cannibal group. Sergei then jumped off the cliff with his wife in his arms. Relying on the buoyancy of the stake, they miraculously survived unharmed. The cannibals above threw spears down. But Sergei flipped over the stake, 
dodging all attacks. Then, using a stone knife, Sergei cut his wife's bindings. They escaped the terrifying island on a raft that fell from above. Although the film had some comedic elements, the plot was still quite good. In the end, the couple finally reconciled, leading to a very satisfying conclusion. Stay tuned for more exciting content to come.